Hey, what's up guys? I am Joe from Workbench, and today we're gonna to go over volume four of Quick Tips. All right, so tip number one is to guide layer your audio. I'm sure you've done this before. See how it doubles up there? If you actually go into here and you also guide layer your audio, like we did with this background, go back into here and if you play this section, it doesn't double up. So this is helpful if you have a master comp with an audio track and you need audio in your pre-comp so that you can animate to it. You can also turn them off in here obviously, but if you do it this way and you remember to do it, you won't accidentally forget to turn these switches off later on. Because I'm usually guide layering my background, I also remember to do it to the audio, so this actually helps me out so that I don't have to re-render stuff when the audio doubles on itself. So your mileage may vary. All right, so number two is to guide your guides. So normally if you have guides in here and you want to move them around, that's cool. But if you want to get rid of them like an illustrator or something, you need your rulers to be around. But in After Effects, you can actually just drag it off the window and they'll go away. Okay, so number three is equal values. And this one is thanks to Jorge Sorbada. So if you remember in the last Quick Tips video, I showed you guys how to make this ellipse into a circle really quickly. And Jorge actually sent me a faster way to do it. So if you open up your circle and you have your size open up, if you hold down your option key and you double click on this little link right here, it'll actually make these values equal. I think it usually picks the first value. So then you can just scale this back down. It's not just the size property, it's actually also on scale and all sorts of other properties that have this little link. So that's an awesome tip. All right, so the next tip is reversing your keys. This one comes to us from Victoria Nice, the product manager of After Effects who's a really nice lady. I was talking with a few people and we were all actually independently developing a reverse keyframe script. So you can exactly flip an animation. And while this method can't exactly keep a group of keyframes in order, like if you do scale here and you set it over here to 50 and you move these over to here, you go this way. So it scales first and then does position. If you select all of these and you actually open up the graph editor, you can select them all again because it doesn't select them all that way for some reason. And then move it this way. You'll notice that it goes backwards, but it still does scale first. So it reverses the keys, but in the same order. I don't know why it doesn't just flip them around like cinema, but at least it's another way to reverse and scale your keys. Cause you can still go in here and drag this box out. So it's just another way to move all your animations around. If you hold down command, you can actually scale right from the center. Kind of this anchor point. When I first tried this, I actually thought it did a proper reverse. So maybe there's something uh, in the last update that messed that up. If not, I guess I'll keep developing my script. All right, so number five is an earth. And this one's actually just kind of a weird thing I noticed. So if you put a gradient fill set to radial on a circle or whatever, and you mess with the highlight length, as you can see, we go from 100 to negative 100, it'll actually move across kind of like the sun going across the earth. And I kind of accentuated that using a drop shadow in the background. That was just something I found interesting. So tip number six is to use the search box. And I never really used this too much before, but if you're in your timeline, you hit command F, it'll bring you to the search box here. And you can use this to search for like layer names or properties. And if you have nothing selected, it'll do that on every layer. But what's cool is you actually select a layer. You can still hit Command F. And I have some presets for like outline text and stuff that where it like draws strokes around it and all sorts of different stuff. So I don't want any strokes or fills or merges or whatever on my type. So what I'll do is I'll go in and I'll hit fill and stroke and merge, hit enter. And you'll see that it brings up every property in here. It's like that. So I'm just gonna bring this window real big, real quick. And if you select all of this stuff and you hit delete, it'll get rid of it. Now the merges are actually a little bit different, so you actually have to open up like this, but then you can get rid of the merges pretty easily. Open up each one, kill that merge. Uh, I usually kill the second set, because that's usually the inner piece of the text. And then this last one. And if we go back, you can see I now have the actual outlines of the text. So I can apply any of my presets that actually stroke around the text. So tip number seven comes to us from Drew Care. If you guys remember my tutorial where I showed you guys how to use audio amplitude to actually drive some animation, he actually mentioned that if you go into your graph editor and you have one of these things selected, like both channels, and you click on any of these points to have any kind of keyframe selected, if you look up in your info panel, it'll actually tell you the minimum and maximum. So you don't have to go through and find anything, which is pretty awesome. If you want something a little bit more general for like a linear expression, you can also do like zero to whatever units it has up here, because this should be the maximum as well. But this one is the exact maximum. So if you need that specificity, it's perfect. So thanks for that one. So number eight is a way to select a ton of keyframes. 
So you could select this way and just scroll through a whole bunch of stuff, but as you select more and more keyframes, at least on the Mac, the interface really slows down. So what I like to do is I actually go and start selecting over here where I know there are no keyframes, wait till I get to the bottom, which still takes a second. But when you have like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of layers, it's still quicker. Then you select over here and you'll notice it'll slow down, but if I let go, they're all selected all the way to the top. So now you can move them around or do whatever you want. All right, so tip number nine is command drag. So I'm sure you know if you drag through here, normally this goes by like one point at a time. If you hold shift and move this around, it goes like 10 at a time. But if you hold command, you can actually do it by points. So this right now does it like one tenth of whatever the value it normally moves at. So if you need some finer control, use your command key. So number 10 is something else that I found kind of interesting. I have an image of the University of Tampa that I have CC hex tile on. And if we make these down really small, you can see it kind of is like a bug's eye. So I never really messed around with this too much, but the smaller you get, the kind of more general it gets. The larger you get, the closer you actually get to the real image. And if you make these guys like five pixels, you start to get kind of a weird hex pattern. That's kind of neat. So maybe it can be used for like some kind of glitch that you would use with mosaic instead or just something else. I don't know. I just thought it was kind of an interesting looking effect, which I never really played around with it too much. You can also get some weird like kaleidoscopy kind of stuff if you change it to like fold aligned or fold seamlessly. So you might have seen that, but I don't know. I just never played around with it. So anyway, that's all the tips for Quick Tips 4. If you have any comments or questions, leave them in the comments down below. If you have any tips that I haven't gone over before in all of these volumes, send them to me and I'll shout you out. And if you'd like to help support what I do, check out patreon.com slash workbench. I've updated the reward tiers to offer a little bit more value. Now you can get things like presets or textures. The higher levels will get things like scripts, and a lot of that stuff will be actually unreleased for products later on. So you'll kind of be getting a preview or a taste of what's to come. So if that sounds interesting to you, check it out. If not, no worries. There'll still be a tutorial next week. All right, guys. I am Joe from Workbench, and I'll see you guys next week. Bye.